Hey there! Um, I want to do a quick review of a fountain pen that's on loan to me from a friend so that I can get it back in the mail to him. Oh, and there's my cats. I apologize. Every video it seems like is becoming, and here's a pen and here's my cats interrupting me. Anyway, um, so before I do that, a note that I want to make about pen reviews kind of from here onward that I'm going to be doing. So, um, I was watching a video the other day, a, a pen review video, of course, and um, the the guy who was reviewing the pen was talking about the nib and said, oh, you know, I just, you know, these nibs are really good. And, and a lot of pen reviewers do that, and I'm not trying to, like, harsh on anyone, um, because it's just kind of, you know, that's what you do. You're like, oh, yeah, this pen writes really well, so, you know, these pens are good writers. But the fact is, is that, you know, you have a sample size of one or two or whatever, um, you know, you don't really have a good statistically significant sample size. So, you know, you can, I, I, so, so I'm going to not use that kind of language. I'm going to say, okay, this pen writes really well, or this pen didn't write well, but I'm not going to speak in general terms about, um, the nib quality from a, an entire line of pens, because there's probably thousands or millions of pens out there. I've only tried one or two. Especially with, with pens like, um, you know, Pilot uh, Vanishing Points and like Lamy Safaris or, you know, any Lamy pens that have the interchangeable nibs or Caveco pens that, that fit the interchangeable nib units. Anything with an interchangeable nib unit where, okay, these nibs units are being mass produced um, across, you know, an entire line of pens. You can swap them out relatively cheaply. You know, um, Lamy nibs are maybe 10 to $15. Um, Caveco nib units are, I think, thirteen or fourteen dollars. This um, the vanishing points are quite a bit more expensive at roughly sixty. Um, but you know, if you get a bum nib, it's not that much to replace it. So I'm kind of not going to review nibs. I'm mostly going to review. Okay, this is the body of the pen. This is maybe like the size, like the physical dimensions of the nib. This is how the pen feels in my hand. That kind of stuff, and leave the writing performance to to other bloggers. I just, I don't feel comfortable reviewing the writing performance based on one nib. You know, if it, if it's awful, I don't feel comfortable saying, oh, they're all awful. And if it's really great, I don't feel comfortable saying, oh, it's really great. Exceptions to this will be um, more expensive pens, which I don't anticipate getting anytime soon. But like, you know, if I were to get like a Pelican M800 or something, like that's a, that's a really expensive pen. And in that case, you know, the quality control should be up to the point where you know, you should be getting a good nib on every pen, and if you don't, that's worth noting. Cheaper pens, especially like Lamy Safaris and stuff, it's like, this is a mass-produced steel nib. If it's not any good, you buy a new one, and that's just how it goes. That's how I approach it. Anyway, I'm not going to keep talking about that. So the pen that I'm looking at today is a Caveco Lilliput. So this is a teeny tiny pen. This is the Brass Wave version, um, and... This is a pen that I never would, would have bought for myself, although I have been eyeballing the fire blue version because, oh my god, is that pretty. If they made an all sport in that, uh, I would pay any amount for that. I don't even care. So, Caveco, you should make a fire blue all sport. I'd buy it. Um, and the copper one because I'm a sucker for copper, um, that, that bright, you know, shiny penny copper. Um, but anyway, this is the brass one, and you can see it, it does have a little bit of a patina because it, it has been used and everything. It's not brand new, and it's not been polished, I don't think, recently. So, okay, so features of the Lilliput. First, it's really small, um, and that's kind of the selling point of this pen is that it's really small. So I want to do a size comparison with some other pens so you can see just how small it is. Because, I mean, I can show it against my hands, but you have no gauge on how, how big my hands are. So um, first pen, this guy is a... Fisher space pen, uh, Fisher bullet space pen. So one of the really small guys. It's roughly, looking at it from above, I can see it's it's like the same size as the Lilliput. Um, they are twins in terms of length. So that gives you an idea. Here is my All Sport, which is, as you can see, about a centimeter or so longer. And I mean, I think of the All Sport as a pretty compact pen. Um, then a Safari and a vanishing point, just for good measure. So you can see this pen is really small. Um, it's meant to be very, very small. And, and it's very thin too. Um, 
it's, it's a very thin pen. So, however, you know, it's meant to be small in the pocket, full size in the hand. So I'm going to post a couple of these guys. So this guy, it's a screw top cap, and then it screws to post. There are, um, well, I have it open. There are threads. Oh, come on. You were focused. There are threads on the very, very end of the barrel, and that's where your cap screws into. So that guy screws on like that. Um, you know, in contrast, of course, the All Sport um, is a screw cap, and then it just uses friction to post. Um, and then I'm going to leave these guys unposted, because I don't write with the Safari posted. So you can see that when it's posted, it's a decently sized pen. It's roughly the same length as the Safari, um, you know, just about the same length as the All Sport 2, maybe a millimeter or so difference. So it becomes, I don't want to say a full size pen when it's, when it's posted, um, but it becomes a decently sized pen when it's posted. So, okay, let me put away all these other pens. Um, so, okay, so, and, and you can see it's a thin pen. This is a very thin pen. Um, let me show you a couple. So I have decently sized hands, um, long hands, but not big hands. Um, I can't, I can write with the all sport unposted a couple of words. This guy, I can't because it, it, it gets right back into there and that's awkward. Um, posted, it does become comfortably long. Um, you know, it rests on my hand nicely. Um, it's also because it's a brass body, it's got a good weight to it, um, so it doesn't feel too light. Um, so, so it feels good in the hand. My problem is the section is very thin. Um, it's very narrow section. Come on, focus. It's a very narrow section, and um, I find that it's not comfortable for me. And, and here's why. So I had my boyfriend try writing a little bit with this pen. He loves it. He thinks it's really comfortable. I don't find it to be comfortable because I have, I don't want to say long fingernails, but I, I have, I have fingernails that protrude, um, you know, past the tips of my fingers. So for me, when I write with really thin pens, you can see here, my middle finger nail will push into the pad of my thumb. And sometimes if I'm, you know, getting too excited, then my pointer finger will too, but not as much. It's mostly my middle finger into the pad of my thumb, and that starts to hurt, um, you know. And so my fingernails start to get in the way, and that's why I don't find it comfortable. Um, and I think the reason that my boyfriend finds it comfortable is because he keeps his fingernails very short, and so he doesn't have that problem. Otherwise, it's a very comfortable pen. Um, the section is nicely curved, um, you know, so you can kind of really get your fingers in there and, and they really kind of fall into a good place. The threads aren't sharp. There's not really a step to speak of. Um, so, I mean, otherwise, it's a great pen. It's really solidly constructed. Um, so, I mean, otherwise, I would like it, but I just, I keep my fingernails a certain length and this just doesn't work with me. Um, it is a cartridge-only pen. Um, I, I think even if you could find a converter that maybe worked in the All Sport, um, it's not going to work in this pen because there is just, there is just no, no room. I mean, this is a really thin pen. There's just no room for anything other than a cartridge. Um, so, but I mean, this isn't really meant to be something that you're going to sit down and write an essay with. It's meant to be a pocket pen. It's meant to be a pen that's ultra portable so you can have it with you at all times. Um, so in terms of, an, another thing that I liked about it before I get onto whether or not I would recommend it. Um, so I carry my all sport as a pocket pen, um, which is, you know, bigger and thicker. The, a complaint that I have about my all sport is that <laughs> while it's probably a good pocket pen for most guys, women's pants don't have a lot of pocket space. Um, and I wear skinny jeans, so they're, they're not like super tight, but they're fairly tight. And with this guy in my pocket, it sometimes gets in the way when I go to sit down um, and I kind of have to stop halfway through my sitting down, adjust the pen, then sit down. Because um, otherwise it doesn't kind of lay in that hip crease, right? So this causes a problem sometimes. It's not the most unobtrusive pocket pen ever. This guy, it, it disappears in my pocket. 
Um, I, you know, I had it in my pocket. It's like the space pen. You put it in your pocket and you forget that it's there. Um, so to me, this is a great pen to just have in your pocket. It's always with you, but it's not going to bother you. You know, it's, it's not going to be like, hey, 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 pay attention to me. Instead, it's like, hey, I'm here. I got you if you need me. So I really, really appreciate that. Um, but I wouldn't buy it myself. So for me, you know, there's, there's the fingernail issue with it being a thin pen. That's just me. Another thing I don't like about it. So it's an ultra portable pen. It's kind of always there when you need it. But, you know, okay, I get the screw cap thing because it's, it's got to screw, you know, together. Otherwise it won't stay together in your pocket. I've had times where my Allsport has come unscrewed in my pocket. I don't know how. So you have to go through the motion of unscrewing it. And then you have to post it to actually write anything with it. And so to me, like, that's just, oh, I just bumped my camera holder. Sorry. Um, to me, that whole process is just a little bit too much for a pen that I might just need to sign a receipt or make a quick note. Um, you know, this guy, I can write a few words unposted. So I, you know, it's like, if it's a quick thing, I don't need to post it. It's fine. This guy, you have to post it. And so it takes time to, you know, to unscrew it and, you know, post it. Plus, I find that it's not always easy to get it. You know, it sometimes takes me a try or two, especially because the end is rounded. Um, you know, the, the end is very round. And so if I kind of don't quite hit it right, then it kind of wobbles around and I kind of have to like really pay attention to be able to screw the end on. Um, versus this guy where you just have to kind of find it and plop it on. So I would not buy this for myself. Um, and I would recommend it for someone who needs a pen to always be in their pocket or maybe in their wallet or something like that, who always needs a pen to be there, um, but is maybe going to write, you know, a paragraph or so with that pen. It's not going to be for super quick notes. It's going to be, oh my gosh, where's my pen? Okay, now I can start, you know, or taking notes in a meeting or something. It's, it's, it's not a pull it out, jot a few words, put it back away. It's, it's a have it with you and then maybe write a page or half a page with it and then put it away. Um, otherwise, you know, granted sample size of two, but the Caveco nibs I've had have written pretty well. And the nice thing is, is that they're interchangeable so you can buy a new one if you decide you don't like the nib size you have or something like that, um, which is good because these are not cheap pens, you know, not reviewing the all sports off with that guy side. This guy, um, I mean, these, these all sports, the, the aluminum ones are, I think, uh, 55. Sorry, I have my computer next to me and I have the, uh, a website up to look at the prices. The, um, aluminum ones are like 55 and then they only go up from there. So to get a brass one, it's, you're in the eighties to get a stainless steel one, which I think is a newer release. You're up in the nineties and then the copper ones are, and the fire blue ones are up over hundreds. So these are not cheap pens. And so, you know, for a not cheap pen to just live in your pocket to me seems extravagant. I, I wouldn't. I would stick with um, either like a, a Fisher Space Pen. These are 30-ish maybe. Um, and, and they will write anywhere, um, even on the moon. So, you know, to me, I would probably go with a Fisher Space Pen or an All Sport. That's probably what I would choose over the sky. Plus, there's no... Um, clips for the Lilliput. So, you know, if you set it down somewhere, it's going to roll and there's nothing to stop it versus, you know, a Fisher Space Pen, you can put a clip on it or um, an All Sport, you know, they're octagonal and you can put clips on them. So overall, I think it's a great pen. It's well constructed. Um, you know, my boyfriend loves it. He <laughs> He's threatening to not let me send it back to its um, home. So, but don't worry, I will wrestle it away from him and make sure it gets headed back out in the mail. Um, you know, he loves it. I don't. So, um, yeah, that's all I got. Let me know if you have one of these or if you love it, if you hate it, um, if you maybe have one of the fancy ones or one of the fire blue ones. Oh my goodness. And seriously, Caveco, make a fire blue all sport or even a stainless steel all sport. Uh, I, I, I guess it wouldn't be the all sport then. It would be the, you know, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, make one, make a fire blue one. I'll pay whatever you want for it. Oh, yum. Anyway, so that's all I got. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.